All right, so welcome to 2.4. We're going to be simplifying fractions, also known as reducing fractions. All right, so yesterday we found the greatest common divisor, so let's do that. So I asked you, what's the largest number that divides into 8 and 10? And I said, actually do this division uh, to check that you got the right answer. 2 is the greatest common divisor of 8 and 10. Keep going. Greatest common divisor of 9 and 12 is 3. So 9 divided by 3 is 3. 12 divided by 3 is 4. Greatest common divisor of 16 and 12, I think, is 4. Let's see. 16 divided by 4 is 4. 12 divided by 4 is 3. 4 and 3 don't have a common divisor, so we're good. I think the greatest common divisor of 35 and 30 is 5. They both end in a 0, or 5 or a 0. That one is 7, and that one is 6, so there you go. Now, why did I have you show the work today? Well, today we're going to be simplifying fractions. So if you simplify the fraction 8 tenths, I want everyone to simplify the fraction 8 tenths. Well, what do you do? You divide top and bottom by 2, right? And then you get 4 fifths. That looks a lot like what we just did, right? You know, you, you might have had a teach. You might have had a teacher who had a, wrote it like this. Now it, you can write just one division sign, but you have to write twos twice. Eight tenths divided by two is not right. That is not simplifying. That's a division by two. That's not simplifying by two. All right. So this is how you simplify a fraction. It's what you did yesterday, right? How would you simplify nine twelfths? Well, you would divide by the greatest common divisor, and the answer is 3 fourths. How would you simplify 16 twelfths? Well, you divide top and bottom by 4, and you get 4 thirds. And believe it or not, you're allowed to leave it that way. If you, all right, we'll talk about that. And 35 thirtieths, how would you simplify that? Well, you divide top and bottom by 5, and the answer is 7 sixths. So if you can do yesterday's lesson, you can already do today's lesson. We're going to be simplifying fractions. All right, so let's look at these fractions. And I want you to pick the one that's the largest. Now, Mr. Ben doesn't usually do trick questions, but it was a trick question. Why was it a trick question? Because they're all equal. If you simplify 50 hundredths, it makes 5 tenths. Guess what? 50 is half of 100. If you simplify that one, it's also one half. Five tenths also is one half. Two fourths is also one half. These are all equal to each other. They are called equivalent fractions. Because you simplify all of these, they simplify to one half. Okay, we're gonna make sure everyone can say a fraction first. A lot of people get all the way here to sixth grade and they can't say this fraction. So, all right, so how would you say that? You would say that as one, you're saying it out loud, one half. That's one half, right? How would you say that? All right, so you say the numerator normally, two, and you say the bottom like the order of a race. It's called an ordinal number, two thirds. The only one, right? The only exception to that is half, right? We don't say one second because if the rule was consistent, we would say one second. We don't. We say one half, but that's two thirds. So how do you say that? That is seven and the word where you say and in math is right in between those seven and two for the numerator and fifths, right? If there was one of them, it would be singular, but it's two of them. So it's two fifths. Seven and two fifths. All right, this is the one. Usually, most people know those three. What about this one? This is the plural of one half. So, what do you think the plural of one half is? Well, there's three of them. All right, and there are three halves. Right? If you have a baby cow, it's a calf. If you have two baby cows, it's calves. Half and halves have the same plural as calf and calves. So that's three halves, that's how you say it. 
All right, so fractions always may, must be reduced or simplified. You're not going to raise your hand in class ever again with any teacher and say, do we need to simplify this fraction? The answer is always do. There is no right answers in math that are not simplified. All right, you, you continue to simplify until the numerator, the top, for those who've forgotten that, and the denominator, the bottom, all right, can no longer be divided by any common factor other than one. All right, so let's do that. So to simplify this, you can write one division symbol if you want, but I tend to write two. But you have to write the five twice. If, if you write this on your homework, I am going to give you a zero because it's, that's not simplifying. That's dividing by five. It's not the same thing. This is simplifying by five. So you can't be lazy. You have to write two fives there. And some teachers will write it as five fifths because that is true. But 10 divided by 5 is 2, 15 divided by 5 is 3, and so the answer is 2 thirds. Okay? All right, so do the next one. All right, so we're going to be using what we've been learning. Those end in a 0, so your first answer thought should be 10, right? The 10 times table. And you get 5, and how do you say that? You say that is 5 sixths. Next. All right, so those are even numbers. 14 divided by 2 is 7. 12 divided by 2 is 6. And that is 7 sixths. Now, you are absolutely allowed to leave it that way. Now, if you think, wait, I, ha I have to make it 1 and 1 sixth. That was a teacher rule that your teachers were making you practice making it a mixed number. That's not a thing. If I don't ask for that, you don't have to give it. If you want to give it, it's fine. But the as long as this answer is a simplified fraction, it's correct. Just because the top is bigger, that's called, Im what is that called? Do you know? Yeah, that's an improper fraction, but an improper fraction is fine as long as it's a simplified one. 14 twelfths can never be an answer, not because the top is bigger, but because it can't, it's not simplified. Try this one. All right, so notice that's you need your 25 times table right if you have if you don't didn't know the lesson you might uh, do this with five and if you do it with five you have extra work because you got to go twice so 50 divided by 25 is 2 125 divided by 25 is 5 the answer is 2 fifths so now unlike yesterday say you picked five all right you got 10 and I, well, how many times does 5 go into 125? Let me see that. It goes in 2, and it goes, oh, there it goes in 25 times, right? If you get, now you had to go back and fix this yesterday. Today, you don't have to. You just go again. But, you, you know, as long as you get to 2 fifths, with, it's always faster to use the greatest common divisor. But if you use two smaller ones, that's fine today. You'll just have more work. All right, so I'd like you to copy this picture, please. All right, and you're going to figure out what fractions are shown here. Well, out of six rectangles, four are shaded. So it shows four, six, but it also shows another one. Right? It also shows two-thirds, so that two-thirds, two out of the three larger rectangles are also shown. So it says what fractions? Well, it's four-sixths and two-thirds are both shown. All right, copy down the fractions that simplify to one-half. Which ones? Well, 2 is half of 4, so that's good. You should have copied that down. 3 is half of 6, so you should have copied that down. 4 is half of 8, so you should have copied that down. 5 is half of 10, so you should have... Whoops, that's a very large one on the top there. I should have copied that down. And 6? No. Right? That makes three sevenths, no, right? Six twelfths, right? And you should be able to look at fractions and know, yes, they're one half or no, they're not one half 
just by looking at it, all right? Right, if you and a friend are sharing something, right, you wanna be able to look at, if there's 14 jelly beans, you wanna be able to look at that and know, well, half of them is seven, right? That's the one. That's a very important skill, not just for math class, but for life. All right, so let's try the next one. Okay, so you don't have to copy this whole thing, so, but that's where three and four sixths would go. We're gonna, you're gonna be copying some number lines another day. So that's three and one sixth, right? Three and two sixths, three and three sixths, and right there is three and four sixths. And then obviously after it is three and five sixths, four is the same as three and six sixths. That's how this works. We'll talk more about that. So we're gonna reduce this three and four sixths to what? Three and two thirds. So three and two thirds and three and four sixths are equal. They're equivalent. They go in the exact same location on the number line right there. And why you need to know that. All right, so you don't have to copy this, but 30 students, all right, so this is key. 30 students were asked their favorite sandwich. So let's make sure this adds up to 30. Let's see. 12 plus 2 is 14, plus 9 is 23. Yeah, this adds up to 30. So out of 30 students, according to the table, what fraction like peanut butter? Right? It says 12 thirtieths, but why is 12 thirtieths not the answer? Well, because you always simplify your fractions. So 12 thirtieths has to be simplified to two fifths. So two fifths of the students, we would say, liked peanut butter the best. That was the winner. But notice two fifths was less than half of them, but it was still the most, two fifths. All right, so we're gonna practice. So you're gonna do all those. Write the fraction or mixed number. So that's nine halves. That's what nine halves looks like. 49 and 84 are both on the 7 times table. Simplifies to 7 twelfths. Just, if you go look at your ruler, get a ruler out in your house, almost all rulers, not 100% of them, are in sixteenths. So in between 0 and 1, there will be 16 little marks. Sometimes there's 8, sometimes there's 10. But most good rulers are 16. So you measure in sixteenths. But then you have to simplify this, which is six and three fourths. And if you look at your ruler, you will see that the three fourths symbol is usually a little bigger than the ones next to it. All right. And there's, oh, remember yesterday I said you have to know a thousand divided by 25. Did I say that? Yeah, or there was a, yeah, I did, right? Because 25 goes into 104 times, 25 goes into 1,040. So this is 3 fortieths. All right, good luck on your homework. Show your work, show your simplified fraction. Thank you.